Okay, so we can continue talking about properties of logarithms. Now in the previous lesson, remember, you were given um, a log expression and you were asked to expand it. So um, uh, you were asked to either write it as the sum of two logs or the difference of two logs or um, a power times a log. So either use the, the um, product rule either use a product rule. So the expanded this, remember, that would be the, the log base b of m plus the log base b of n. Or you use the quotient rule. And so the expanded the quotient rule, that would be the, the, the difference. So that would be the log base b of the numerator minus the log base b of the denominator. In the order matters. you got to make sure you put the numerator first. Or you use the power rule, which implied that if I have the log base b of uh, m raised to the n power, I can take that power, that exponent n, and I can write it as a factor times this product. So in other words, it will be n times the log base b of m. So, so, so this was called expanding. So I expanded this product into a sum. I expanded this quotient into a difference and I expanded this exponent into a product. What's going to happen now is you're going to go backwards. So you'll be given the sum, so you'll be given this expanded form and you want to condense it. You want to condense it. You want to condense it. So it'll look like this. So in other words, so again what we just said, so uh, these are properties of condensing logarithmic expressions. So if you're given the log be given the, the sum of two logs. Now remember, these properties only apply if the bases are the same. The bases have to be the same here in order for you to condense. The bases must be the same in order to condense. And so, so if I'm taking the sum of two logs with the same base, then that's just going to be the, this product. So it'll be the log base b of the product. That's all that is. So you, you took this expanded form and you condensed it. That's, that's what it means to condense. So here you're taking this, this difference of two logs with the same base. Remember, it does matter. The base have to be the same. The arguments don't, but the bases do. The bases have to be the same. So I want to take this expanded form and I want to write it in condensed form. So remember, the difference of two logs is the log of the quotient. So it be the log base b of the quotient and the first argument is the numerator and the second argument is the denominator. And so over here, so you have a um, factor times a log. So that means that when you write in condensed form then that would be just the log base b of m to the n power. Okay, so that notice that right here looks like this. So this is what you get. This right here is this. So this is condensed form right here. And then this right here, this this sum of two logs is this, and a condensed form you get that. Okay. Now let's look at some problems dealing with with this. So the director is going to say something like this. So it'll say use properties of logarithms to condense each logarithmic expression. All right, so let's suppose you had this, and it'll, it'll probably say something like write as a single logarithm, or it could say, or it could say write as a single logarithm. All right, so condensing would imply to write as a single logarithm. So notice, notice when I condense these, I wrote it as one single logarithm, one log, one log, one log. So we're from two logs to one log, two logs to one log. Okay. So number one, let's suppose we had um, the log of 2 base 4 plus the log of 32 base 4. So the log of 2 base 4 plus the log of 32 base 4. So remember, um, I have this expanded form, so I have the sum of two logs with the same base. So according to the condensed form, I can write this as the log of the product of the arguments. Now notice that, that the base is 4, so keep the base is 4, but I'm saying 2 times 32, so let me go ahead and just write it out. You don't have to write in that step, 
if you want to, you can say that's 64. But I'm going to say 2 times 32, which becomes a log base 4 of 64. Now that's where we're at. Now, now, just like before, if you can simplify this without using a calculator, then do so. So this, this is this you can do without using a calculator. So you're asking yourself, let's go with the sign and think about what we said in the last lesson or the lessons before that. That remember, this is a uh, the logarithm is an exponent. So you ask, so you can change this to exponential. So you're saying four to what exponent is 64? Well, four cubed is 60. Four. So the answer here is just 3. So that's what you write. So remember, if you can simplify, you simplify. Don't, don't leave it a single logarithm if you can go further. All right, so you're not going to get full, full credit with this. So you gotta, you got to go further if you can. All right, number 2. Suppose we had the log of 4x minus 3 minus the log of x. So the log of 4x minus 3 minus the log of x. Okay, well, notice I'm, uh, I'm dealing with the difference of two logs. The argument here is 4x minus 3. The argument here is x. What do you notice about the bases, though? So you notice the bases are the same. So that's the good thing. So the bases are the same. Regardless of what the arguments are, see the arguments are different, but the bases are the same. Since the bases are the same, I can write as a single logarithm. I can condense this. And so I'm going to get the log of, so remember, the, the difference of two logs is a quotient. So the uh, numerator is going to be the first argument, and then the denominator is going to be the second argument. And then you're done. That's your answer. So this is just the log of um, 4x minus 3 divided by x. That's all it is. All right, let's look at this. Suppose we had... The, log, the natural log of x plus the natural log of 7. The natural log of x plus the natural log of 7. Well, you want to write a single logarithm. So notice that this is a sum, a sum of two logs. A sum of two logs, the natural log in this case. And so according to our properties, I can write this as a single logarithm. So I can write this as the natural log of the product x times 7, which is just 7x. So you write a 7x, natural log of 7x. Now, uh, it's a good idea to put this in parentheses, because um, technically, you can also read this. See how I had it written? You can read this as log of 7 times x. Um, log of 7 times x, which it really should be the log of 7x, which means this. Okay, So it really should be in parentheses. Okay, so don't forget to put that in parentheses. Um, okay, so uh, let's look at at this one. Suppose we had um, number four, the log of 96 base 2 minus the log of 3 base 2. The log of 96 base 2 minus the log of 3 phase 2. So as a single logarithm, as a single logarithm, remember that's you're taking the, the difference of two logs, they have the same base, so I can use my properties to condense. So that's going to be the log base 2 of the quotient. Put that in parentheses though. So you're going to say 96 divided by 3. All right. Well, let's figure out what 96 divided by 3 is. 96 divided by 3 is 32. So this becomes log of 32 base 2. And then ask yourself, can I go further with this? Can I figure out what this is equal to very easily without using the calculator? And the answer is yes. So let's think about this. As a log of base 2 of 32, remember you're looking to see what is that exponent, because the logarithm is an exponent, remember. And so you can change this to an exponential. So that would be 2 to what power is 32? So you can think about this very easily. 2 to the third power is 8. 2 to the fourth power is 16. So 2 to the fifth power is 32. So that's a 5. So this right here is just 5. And so your answer is 5. Don't leave it as the log of 32 base 2. All right, so if you can simplify, you do so. The log of 32 base 2 is just 5. All right, let's get to number 
uh, let's look at number five. So number five, we have this. Let's suppose we had um, the log of x plus three log y. All right, now let's think about this for a moment. Okay, so um, I'm taking the sum of two logs. That is true. I, I'm, I'm taking the sum of two logs, and the base is the same, so I can I can condense. But here's the issue. These properties we talked about, these properties right here, notice these properties. When I condense, the coefficient here, the factor multiplying the log by the coefficient here is 1. Coefficient here is 1. There's nothing there, so this to be 1. Coefficient here, in this case, would be minus 1, if you want to write it as an addition problem. Coefficient is 1. Okay? So, so in order to use the first two, in order to condense the first two, these, these coefficients have to be 1's. So when I look at this one, this coefficient is not a 1. That coefficient is a 3. So what I've got to do is if I cover this up for a moment, remember one of our properties, this property right here, I can take that in and write as an exponent. So I can take this 3, I can take this 3 right here, and I'm going to rewrite it over. I can take this 3 right here, take this 3, and write it as an exponent. That's what you want to do first. In order to, in order to change the sum of two logs to a log of a product, in order to change the sum of two logs to a product, this right here has to have coefficients of 1. So if the coefficient is not 1, you have to use the, the power rule first. So you're going to take this 3, you're going to write as an exponent. So here's what you get. You get the log of x plus the log of y cubed. That's what you get. So the log of x plus the log of y cubed. So then, now notice I am taking the log of the sum of two logs, the base of tens, and the coefficients of ones. So I can write this now as a product. And so let's do that. So as a product, this becomes a log. In parentheses, you're going to say x, y, cubed. x, y, cubed. So you're taking the log of this product. You see, if you wrote it like this, technically, if you write it like this, this is what this is saying. If you write this, it's saying this. You're taking the log of x first, and whatever that is, you're multiplying by y cubed. So in other words, in other words, this right here, this right here, really is this. Okay, let me rewrite this. This right here is this. That's what you're technically saying. You're taking the log of x, and whatever that is, you're multiplying by y cubed. But that's not what you want. You want the argument to be x, y cubed. So, so you need to be careful with this. So be careful. Um, use parentheses. Use parentheses when you have more than one factor. See how I have two factors here? An x and a y cubed. Actually, the y cubed are fact three factors of y. But you have you have um, a product, let's say. A product here. So use parentheses when you have a product for the argument. Okay? All right. Number six. Um, suppose you had this. Suppose you had um, 2 log base b of x plus 3 log base b of y. Suppose you had that. All right, well, going back to what we did in number 5, remember, I am taking the, log, the sum of two logs. That is true. The base is the same, but the coefficients here, the coefficient here is a 2. The coefficient here is a 3. In order for me to use that property to condense, in order to use these properties to condense, these these uh, coefficients have to be ones, and so so what I got to do is use the the um, power rule. So I got to pull this power, re rewrite this this factor here as an exponent. So I so I got to rewrite this fact this coefficient of two as an exponent. I've got to rewrite this coefficient of three 
as an exponent. That's the first thing I've got to do. So this becomes log base b of x squared plus log base b of y cubed. And now, coefficients of 1's, so now I can write this as a product. So log base b of x squared, y cubed, but remember, you must put this in parentheses. You must put this in parentheses. If you don't, it means something else, just like this. Okay, number seven. All right, number seven. <clears throat> Suppose you had um, five natural log of x minus two natural log of y. Five natural log of x minus two natural log of y. Okay, so just like before, just like with the sums, you need these coefficients to be ones right here. All right, so it needs to be a one, and I'm going to just kind of cover this for right now. That's a one, although it's really a negative two because you're, you're adding a negative two natural log of y. So, <clears throat> so you're going to, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this over. So what you got to do first is, <clears throat> is take this, this um, coefficient and rise an exponent. Take this coefficient here, rise an exponent. So now you have this. You have the natural log of x, x to the fifth minus the natural log of y squared. And now you can use the fact that, that you're taking the difference of two logs with the same base. The base here is e, 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 because natural logarithm is log base e. So that's your natural logarithm. And so now you can write this as a quotient. So it's a natural log. In parentheses, you're going to say x to the fifth in the numerator y squared in the denominator. So make sure you put that in parentheses though. It has to be in parentheses. Alright, number eight, suppose you had this. Right, number eight, suppose you had um, three natural log of x minus one-third natural log of y. Three natural log of x minus one-third natural log of y. Well, just, just like the previous one, you, you need these coefficients to be ones here. So let's uh, rewrite this exponent. I'm sorry, this coefficient as an exponent. Rewrite this as an exponent. And so you get the natural log of x cubed minus the natural log of y to the one third. And then, <clears throat> and then um, rewriting this as a quotient, uh, you're going to get the natural log of the numerator going to be x cubed. And the denominator will be y to the one third. Um, and so, and so, you can also rewrite this. See, remember y to the one third. You remember when we talked about this in a previous lesson that that you can always rewrite um, y to a rational exponent as a radical. So this is really the cube root. Remember your denominator is your index. So that's a cube root of y to the first. Your numerator is your exponent of y to the first or just y. So I can rewrite this as a natural log. It doesn't matter. You can leave it like this or you can write it like this. I'm about to do. The natural log of x cubed divided by the cube root of y. They mean the same thing. Okay? Alright. Number nine. Let's do one more with this. Number nine. Let's suppose we had um, four natural log of x plus 6 minus 3 natural log of x. So 4 natural log of x plus 6 minus 3 natural log of x. Okay, first thing you need to do, remember you got to have coefficient of 1's here. So you got to rewrite this uh, coefficient as an exponent. you got to rewrite this coefficient as an exponent. So make sure you draw something just if you need to. And so I'm going to get the natural log of x plus 6, and x plus 6 raised to the fourth, so you can write, remember this becomes your exponent, minus and the natural log of x cubed. And now remember, you're taking the uh, difference of two logs, so you can write this as a quotient, as a single logarithm. So a single logarithm will be the natural log in parentheses, remember you're going to have a fraction, you have a quotient, so this is your numerator. So x plus 6 to the 4th, and then your denominator is x cubed. And so that's how it looks. 
So the natural log of x plus 6 to the fourth divided by x cubed. That's what this is. Okay, so that's going to take care of this uh, part of properties of exponents. And that's remember, that's where we went from expanded form to condensed form.